Well, surprise, surprise, Astro has done it again with yet another amazing feature added to the platform. And this one is experimental, so you have to specifically set it up to get access to it. But I think it's pretty cool because this now competes even more with Next.js. And this feature in Astro 4.8, which got released a couple weeks ago, is Astro Actions. Now, if server action sounds familiar to you, this is something that Next.js has really made mainstream and popular in the last several months, maybe a year. And this is basically the ability to call server-side logic from the client based on a form submission or a button click or whatever you want. But as no surprise to me, Astro has done this in a way that I think simplifies developer experience across the board, but also has a few things that I think need to be figured out and also a few things that I learned from this documentation that you wanna keep your eye out for to make sure you don't get messed up along the way. I also found an example that makes zero sense to me whatsoever. I'll show you that at the end and maybe you can explain to me what's going on and what I'm missing. So let's just take a real quick look at what this is. This is, like I said, an experimental feature to be able to take advantage of this. You'll have to add the experimental flag and then actions of true to have access to actions. And you'll have to be on version 4.8 or greater. Now with this, you can then define your actions inside of an actions directory and an index.ts file. Now in some ways, this is a really cool structure to have. I think Astro does a good job of this with the content directory and other directories that are kind of built in and they are opinionated about. But I question a little bit if we have an actions directory and then an index.ts file, where do we define all of the actions just inside of one file? That seems maybe a little bit of a limitation Maybe you can do the thing where you define them in other files and then just re-export them inside the index.ts file. I haven't dug into this more, so I'm not really sure what the answer is there. I like the opinionated actions directory. I do question how do we use this at scale and how do we split them out into other files, which I assume we will want to do. Now, one of the things they call out really quickly is no more having to cast form data to the specific properties that you're looking for to get from a form. So what does that mean? Well, typically if you have just an incoming raw form data, you would have to extract each one of those items and then do some validation around them. So you can get email from form data.get email and then validate that as well. What's really cool is you use this to define action here function, and then you say, what type of format does it accept? You get two forms, either uh, pun intended, a form input, or you get a JSON input. So basically the idea is either you're doing a form submission directly to the server, or you're handling some sort of button click, like a like action button or something like that. So I think that's really cool that they have two ways to just define what the data is. This means no more defining that we're gonna receive JSON versus form data, whatever. And then you get to define your input right in line. Now, again, no surprise that we've added some developer experience on top of this that is a little bit opinionated in the sense that it's going to use Zod out of the box. Now, if you've worked with uh, content collections inside of Astro, this will seem familiar to you because this is how we define content collections in Astro as well to get that typing and validation around the schema for our collections. And in this case, the schema for our input. I like this again, we don't have to add any additional validation inside of our handler. We just have to tell it what the input should look like and it's taking care of that boilerplate for us because I don't really feel the need to do this myself. Now, if you were to look inside of the examples with Next.js and you look at server-side validation, the two things that I just said we weren't going to have to do, you actually have to do in Next.js. So a couple things. There is uh, defining your schema. So you have to do the full definition of the schema, similar to what we just saw. But additionally, you have to get those individual items from the form, and then you have to handle the validation here itself. So this stuff is kind of taken care of for us. We could even add custom validation messages inside of this configuration object, and then we can handle these things um, on the caller as we receive the input or the result. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, a couple of things to note as you look at this example here, they are referencing a TSX file, a newsletter TSX component. Two things, this requires you to add React to your application. So you can run MPX add or MPX Astro add React to add support for Astro, to add support for React to your Astro project. And then you can copy in this component. Now, the other thing is the for uh, keyword here, can't do that in React, it's HTML4, so you'll get an error for that. But you create basically a React component, and then you can reference uh, inside of here on your on submit, you can prevent default, and then what's cool is you can get the form data from the target, which is the form, 
And then you can reference your actions and then call the action that you define with TypeScript typing. Now, just so you see what this is like inside of mine, if I reference actions, which is imported from actions up here, and then do dot, I actually get those things that I've defined. And I wonder if I do this real time enough. Let's go to our define action and let's call this newsletter updated and save. Now, if I do actions dot, I get newsletter updated. So that is actually working with the actual definition from your action and giving you TypeScript IntelliSense real time as you update that. Now that I change this back, it should work the same way. So I think that's pretty cool. Now, one thing that they throw in here that is kind of interesting is they, they throw in this random input with a spread operator for props that are get action props. This is kind of, well, I mean, definitely glossed over from my perspective. It references it up here once that says you can also use get action props for progressive enhancement. I think that moves over this really way too click quickly, but what you can do is go to the bigger definition under the proposal or the bigger, um, I don't know, documentation of the proposal, and they will show you a better example of this. So if I search get action props, it talks about in here how you add this new input field so that if you're using progressive enhancement, basically you want this to work even if JavaScript is not enabled, it's going to by default, if you define it this way, send that post request to the server. But what this get action props does is basically add some sort of key or unique ID on this input, which is hidden, not visible to the user, submits that to the backend where, uh, where Astro is smart enough to handle that request and then associate that with the specific action that you want to take place. So I think that's really cool. I think this is basically just some sort of unique ID. I don't know exactly what it is, some sort of metadata, but basically a unique ID for when it receives this request, it can look at that input and then see if there's an associated action. If there is, send the rest of the data to that action. So they kind of gloss over that, I think, um, in this. I think it's worth another sentence or two just to explain, but that is a pretty neat feature to handle this offline as well. Now, I learned a lot more through going through the proposal. So there's a lot of details in here about how and where you can call these. How do you call it with a form request? How do you call it with JSON, et cetera? So some really good stuff in here. The other thing that I think is really useful, and this is something that you'll definitely want to pay attention to, is the input validation errors. So you have your input schema, which is again defined with type safety with Zod. When you call your action, you can have further refinements in Zod that can raise a validation error at runtime. You can check if the error is caused by input validation by using is input error. So this is a function where we can inspect the error that comes back from calling this action. And we have to actually call this with dot safe. So we take our actions and then I'm not sure how we nest block blog under comment. I'm actually not sure about that. I'll have to check to see how that works. I would expect that to just be actions dot comment. I'm not sure. I'll come back to that. But we call this with safe. And what that's going to do is return to us uh, two properties, a data property and then an error property. And with this error property, you can then check if it's an input error and then see the specific uh, properties that were or the fields that were the problem. Now, then in your reactive client, you can now say if there is a body error. OK, so we're setting this body error here. We can then display that here. You can do that for the form as a whole or individual inputs, et cetera, whatever you need to do to handle the front end validation and make sure users are getting the feedback that they want. Now inside of here, you can also throw custom errors if you want to. So you can check, you can throw a regular action error and then give it a specific code and a message and then handle that appropriately on the front end. There's a lot of stuff in here. And I, I kind of go back to the idea that Astro has a knack for making developer experience incredible. So even though server actions have been around in Next.js for a while, they've at least been stable for several months now, and I've used them for several not months. This is brand new in Astro as of a few weeks ago, but I have a lot of faith in this going forward because every feature that they've added along the way, they've absolutely nailed from a developer experience perspective. So I'm super, super excited about this and can't wait to see where this goes. Now I do want to reference one thing that I could not figure out for the life of me that I think potentially is super cool and also really mind blowing. So this is another video that I watched from Coding in Public. This is Chris Pennington, who also has an Astro course at learnastro.dev if you wanna check it out. And he did a tutorial on this. And interestingly, if I can go back through and find this, actually I have the entire source code for this demo. If I pull it up correctly, 
So he has inside of here, instead of using a React component, he's just using a vanilla script tag, vanilla JS script tag to handle his form submissions. So if we look down, it does basic stuff where it gets the form, it then does the event listener, and then it also references these actions where he's able to import these actions from within the build system. Now, if I don't know if you've seen this before, if I'm just missing something or I'm just out of the loop, I have never seen in Astro when you add a vanilla JS script tag, the ability to use imports from something that is framework specific like this alias. I don't know if this is supposed to work. I don't know if there's some sort of magic he's doing behind the scenes or if I'm completely oblivious to the fact that it should work. I cannot get this to work in mine. And when I first saw this, I was kind of mind blown because I was like, there's no way, there's no way this is a thing that you should be able to do. So I'm honestly not sure if you could do it this way. That would be really neat to be able to tie this into a regular vanilla uh, Astro component. But I think what we're going to have to do is tie that to something like a Svelte component, something like a React component, et cetera. Quick update. I don't know what changed, but I tried this again just to see. So I have a newsletter component with a regular script tag, and I'm able to run an import back to Astro Actions. Again, this is JavaScript that just runs on the browser. have no idea how it knows about Astro and what Astro Actions is. I have no idea. I don't get it. But if I run this, you can now see that it's going to work. So if I type in my email here, and you sign up, you can see that I get back submitting and success is true. You can see this was the submitting and then the result is what the success of true was. So this works. I have no idea why it didn't work at first, but I also have no idea how this works because a regular vanilla JavaScript script tag running in the browser, I wouldn't think would have any concept of Astro, but somehow it does. Pretty cool. One thing I am interested in though, and I haven't actually seen a demo of this or an example of this, is just being able to handle these form submissions by defining your form and not necessarily calling the action inside of a reactor Svelte component. What I mean is, is there a way in vanilla JavaScript to have the form, tell it to submit, but then just reference an action? And for reference, no pun intended, inside of Next.js, you can do this with a form by defining the action property. Now inside of here, you reference this action that is defined up here, you could also have this defined in another file, but then React slash, but then Next.js takes care of associating that with this actual form and then doing the work for you, as opposed to specifically having to say on a, on submit handler, then call that function. Anyway, I'm not sure if that is anything that is beneficial, what I'm saying, doing this just kind of in a regular Astro component. It could be neat, but in all reality, you're probably going to want to share feedback with the user of what's going wrong as well. So client side validation or at least validation messages, which probably means you're going to want to have a client side component that you can work with. So it worked it seemingly for Chris in this example. I have not gotten this to work at all. So go and check out his video and see if there's anything I'm missing. And let me know in the comments below what I might be missing. But I suggest going through and reading all about the proposals. I'll have a link to this in the video to get an idea for what the reasoning is behind this and what the different specific features and ways that you can use this are in the detail design section and then all the different things that come along with it. All in all, though, I think this is Astro continuing to become a bigger and bigger competitor in the full stack framework space, specifically getting closer to being more competitive and me choosing Astro as a full stack framework over something like Next.js, which I'm also a big fan of, but Astro just takes developer experience to the absolute next level. And I love it. Anyways, let me know what you think about Astro actions in the comments below. And if it's something you think you're going to use in the future, and if this may make you more likely to choose Astro over Next.js in the future as well. Anyways, hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you later.